We're so glad you're with us for Good Karma Wrestling, along with Brian Rhodes from ESPN West Palm. I'm Jonathan Hood from ESPN 1000 in Chicago. And, Brooks, we have a special guest, the CEO of Ohio Valley Wrestling, and our colleague from ESPN Radio, it is Matt Jones, and he is with us right here uh, on Good Karma Wrestling. Matt, uh, it's Brian and Jonathan. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thank you, guys. Um, glad to be with you. I hope you enjoyed Wrestlers. Yes, we want to talk to you about that, Wrestlers on Netflix. You can watch it now. We know a lot of our listeners and viewers watch Netflix, so check out Wrestlers, hashtag Wrestlers, hashtag Wrestler Netflix. Tell us about it, uh, how you're able to get be part of this venture for Ohio Valley Wrestling and the connection with this docuseries. Yeah, so a couple years ago, I was trying to figure out kind of what was next for OVW, and I pitched the idea of let's do Last Chance U, but let's make it about, you know, wrestling. And my co-owner happened to know a person at BBC and we pitched it to BBC. There were 13 producers on the pitch. 12 of them said no, but one of them liked it. And he just happened to know Greg Whiteley who did Last Chance U and brought him in. And next thing you knew, we had uh, the premise of a series. They came and, and spent four months with us and you ended up with wrestlers, which I think is, I mean, I've been a big fan of Greg's for a long time. I've always thought he does a great job and I think it's the best thing he's ever done. I mean, I think last chance you is very, very good. Cheers, very good. But I think this is the, uh, I think this is probably his best piece of work and I'm biased because we're, it's our place, but I do believe it. We've seen it take off on social, Rotten Tomatoes, super into it. What's been the biggest, wait, you watched this moment from people reaching out to you over the last month or so. Yeah, it's been amazing. I mean, initially, a lot of the interest was from people who know me and my radio show in Kentucky and OVW fans. But watching it sort of expand, I think by word of mouth, a lot of it has been great to see. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's big in Britain, which is weird. We have all these British people now all of a sudden interested. And that's, uh, it's exactly what I hoped. You know, I, I wanted to see people, because I genuinely believe what Al does with OVW is some of the best wrestling going, just on a very low budget. And I wanted people to discover it, and, and it seems to be working. Matt, we talked to Jesse Goddard and Al Snow about, you know, the ramifications of this documentary and what that does for business. So after our conversation, I was thinking, okay, because of the word of mouth, because of the success of the this docuseries, I expect to see expansion for Ohio, Ohio Valley Wrestling. Tell me, what do you think 2024 looks as far as expansion? You know, not just at the Davis Arena, but maybe throughout the Missouri Valley. Is that a possibility? Well, I hope so. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, uh, it's been great for us locally. You know, we've sold out the last few shows we've done. I think that hopefully will continue. Um, you know, to expand, we need some help. We need either some investment or potentially, I mean, what I would like to see is a television deal that makes sense for us. We, we need to be on the air beyond Kentucky. Fight TV's great. You know, they don't, it's still the same premise. You're still trying to sell ads. We need somebody to help us pay for the rights and expand our viewership. So that's what I want to see happen. We are going to go on tour, trying to figure out what that looks like. Part of that is going to depend on if we have a season two and how that works. So still kind of trying to make those decisions. But, you know, we were number one on Fight TV last week in, in viewership. That was never the case before. So hopefully, um, you know, hopefully it continues. I, The one thing I'm confident in, I know Al and Jesse and those guys are going to do a great job with the product. What I have to do is try to make the right business decisions to really help us take advantage. All right. So you heard it here, so, you heard it here first, bro. It's, so a little <laughs> Murray, Kentucky, a little Valparaiso. Chicago eventually big show 2024. It's gonna be awesome, man. I can't. I wait, would love man. it. We've been we've been to Murray. <laughs> we've been to Murray. We have not done anything in in uh, Valparaiso, but I would love to do it. I'd love to do it in Chicago. You know, the thing I have we have to test to be quite frank you frank with you 
is can OVW sell tickets on its name outside of Kentucky? We can do it in Kentucky. We can do it in Southern Indiana. But can we do it in Indiana, Illinois? And, and I don't know. I mean, I hope so. But that's one of those things you have to almost try and see before you really know. And that's what I'm trying to figure out what makes sense to do because it's still kind of an unknown, you know? So sort of that mindset, you know, the first episode, you make the comment, wrestling dorks don't spend money. Seeing that reaction, what's it been like for you watching the show and sort of seeing that behind the scenes look at others talking about you, essentially? Yeah, I mean, what, like a lot of things, you say something and then you say, well, I wish I'd said that differently. What I meant, right. here's what I meant. What I meant was there's this indie wrestling fan base online that hates OVW. Not so much OVW, but like they like this kind of wrestling that we don't do, right? Like they like the sort of, it, some of them like this very sort of, you know, physical death match kind of thing. You see that in there. Some of them like wrestling that's about flips and like how athletic everybody is. And we're more of a storyline based wrestling. And what I was talking about there was I had been asked, I think, by the produce by one of the directors. How do you have much of an online following out in the world? And I basically was like, no, wrestling dorks don't like us and then they don't spend money. But I'm talking about this very small sort of niche of people that don't even like this show, right? I mean, these are fans of people. You know, look, you know this. <laughs> wrestling fans like to hate yeah. wrestling. It's like part of their thing, uh -huh. you know? And uh but I, it's a tribalism. We get it. It is. And like, you know, and, but it made it seem like I was talking about all wrestling fans, which is stupid because wrestling fans spend a lot of money. I mean, look at WWE, AEW, even things like GCW do a great job. It's just we're different than that. And I think what we have to do to make money is get the kind of people that watch WWE, don't watch indie wrestling, but would like the kind of local nature of what we do and that's what we have to find and that's a little different than the online wrestling fan base and that's what i was talking about okay I, we want to make sure that's clear we've seen your other interviews talk about this i just know you because i followed your career if if coach stoops or coach you know cal said uk dorks you'd be all over them yes be, yeah, yeah, so oh, I understand. listen i know what first of all <laughs> I consider dork a term of affection. I'm a huge dork. Okay. I, like, like I am. I, I when I was in college, I wore a shirt that said dorks. So, like, I'm not. I mean, I. Jeff Foxworthy says about the word redneck. I can say it because I is one. I is a. I is an, a dork, right? So, you know. But with that said, without the context of everything I just said, sure. totally no. Understand why it made people mad. And I get it. But, you know, also, they were setting me up as a heel. It worked. So uh, I think that was part of it, too. Are, are you a heel? I, I mean, I, are you a heel? I hope man? not. Yeah, uh, I mean. You know, I mean, listen, that show, I think, reflected reality, right? I mean, there, were, there, there was a segment of the locker room that was very skeptical of me. There was a segment that wasn't. So, like, if you'll notice, cash flow doesn't say anything. Jesse... Crixus, Shira, Layla, Luke, like a lot of those people believed in my vision. But then there was another group of people that included Haley, Maria, Ronnie, Al, that maybe didn't as much. And I, and I think that was completely showcased in there. I think that was true. The difference was I was saying to these guys, look, we're doing a Netflix show. And I honestly think, guys, they didn't believe it was ever going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, I I had been the one to have the conversations with Netflix, so they didn't believe any of this was ever going to air. So part of their issue, it's almost very meta, part of their issue with credibility was they didn't believe in the entire premise of what we were doing. And so once it came out, once the trailer came out, they believed in it more, obviously, and they started to understand my vision, but they didn't feel that way when they were there. So I think if you ask those people now, they would have a different view of me because everything I said has manifested itself. But 
you know, there's that scene where Ronnie's really frustrated because I told everybody to clear their dates. Yeah. Well, the reason I said clear your dates is Netflix is going to be here. They want everyone on this show to be the same people all summer. If you want to be on this show, you have to clear your dates. If you don't, that's okay. And I think that, but you know, Netflix can't say they cleared their dates because we were here, right? So like, there's a little bit right. of that that's sort of, that, that's kind of hard for people watching to understand. From a talent standpoint, who are some of the guys and girls in your locker room that you hope get that opportunity that are just ready to take that next step in pro wrestling? Well, I hope all of them do. I mean, I'm, I'm not just saying that. Sure. In a perfect world, you know, in a perfect world, I'd like to see all these people go to go the, their dreams, whatever that is. Um, you know, Layla went. I think we have six or seven people that would be ready now. I think Haley is ready. I think uh, Joe Mack, Luke uh, Shira, Luke Curtis Shira. Um, I think Tiffany Tiffany Nieves, who's not on there a lot, but I think she is. Um, Cash, if you know, if if used correctly, I think is. But then I think there's a whole lot of people that if you molded them in the right direction, could be as well. And, you know, Jesse has been there before. I think he just kind of likes what we're doing and sort of believes in being here. But, I mean, I look, I put it like this, and this is no offense to any other wrestling. I see a lot of people that get a lot of pushes that our people are more entertaining than. You know, now, listen, I have a ton of respect for the WWE folks, MJF, Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, all these people. Like, they're all, like, world beaters. But there are also people I see on TV and I go, our folks are as good as them. They just need to be given that chance. And I hope some of them will get to do it. On Ohio Valley Wrestling, because I won't sleep until I see the tour through the Missouri Valley as a UIC Flames guy all throughout the – make money first. And if they go someplace else, that's fine. But no, I no, I, I, we want to – to be honest with you, we've got to see – it. we got to see about if it's a season two. Because if it's a season two – Part of what I think they want to do is film us trying to take that next step, right? They want to film that. And so I need to kind of create that based on an idea of when they'll be here. If there's no season two, then we're cashing in and doing what we can now, and we'll be wherever we can be. Uh, hashtag uh, wrestler Netflix wrestler available now on Netflix. Check it out. If you love wrestling, you'll check out what's happening at Ohio Valley Wrestling. Matt Jones, as always, we appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, guys.